Hello, my academians. How are you all doing today? I hope you're enjoying your still stay at home uh, virtual learning experience. Um, my objective today is to walk you through the writing assignment number one, which is focusing on point of view because it's a little different than what we've done before. Uh, just to give you an overview, there'll be three writing assignments throughout the quarter. This first one here is with point of view um, and narration. Uh, and then the third one is analytical, and the second one is a uh, skip or can't remember what it is right now, but you'll see it rolled out as we go through it. So there's three writing assignments spread out throughout the book. And here is the first one in 5.5. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, the information here that you can see these same directions. If you click on this Google Doc, you can read in a Google Doc, or you can read the exact same information with the links right here. It really, I don't know what the difference would be, but just want to give you voice and choice. Um, so this is an explanation of how this activity connects to the book we're reading, because there's the author. It ties into uh, a psychological study that was kind of interesting. On, um, and here's a summary of it. If you want to go read the longer version, it's here, but here's the, the short points. And then we move into where the assignment is. Now you'll notice it says choose one. There's an option A and an option B. You will complete one, only one of these two activities. You do not need to do both. The first one is where you focus on yourself. And um, you can choose to either, if you're not really sure how to organize things, you can click on this graphic organizer. It will open it up. You then need to copy the document and paste it into your own Google Doc. Um, if you click it on it and you try typing on it, it's going to say you need uh, permission to edit. And if you request it, I will not grant it. This is the document where everyone can go in and copy it and then paste it and use it. If I give you access to it and you start typing on it, then no one else can use it. It will have your information on it. So please, if you want to use a graphic organizer to do this, click here, make your own document. That's where you complete the assignment. It must be typed, not handwritten, typed, not handwritten, and then you submit it to the assignment or if you don't like forms, you're getting tired of forms and worksheets, you can do this on a Google Doc. You just need to make sure you label all the parts, which are laid out here in the steps. You can just put one, two, three, four, five, you know, whatever you need to do to, to label what you're doing and how you're working through the assignment. So option A is that you reflect back on your own life and pick a moment that stands out to you as emotionally powerful, embarrassing, painful, exciting, or joyful. So it's some, some suggestions right here. Um, this one right here, the first impressions of a bad haircut made me remember when I was, um, I'm thinking somewhere around fifth grade, um, I really wanted bangs and my parents, my mom did not want me to have bangs. And so one day I went in and I gave myself bangs. So, um, and I remember the reaction of looking at my mom's face and looking at what I'd done to my hair and yeah, it, it wasn't pretty. Um, and then the consequences of having to wear it like that for a while. So I would go through and I would um, bullet point, outline or bullet point those events using first person. I did this, I went to the bathroom, I grabbed the scissors and come up with about four to seven bullet points using first person pronouns. And then the next part would be is to rewrite the story but using third person pronouns. Instead of referring to myself as I, I would say she did this, she did that, then she reflected on this, or uh, the result was horrific to her. After you're done going through your first person bullet point and your third person actually writing out sentences narrative, you're gonna write three to four sentences at the end that explains what it felt like to write in the third person, the second one. Was it weird, normal, difficult, explain why? And after you're done going through that, you're gonna go down to the rubric below, make sure that you meet all the criteria you want to get the score that you're looking for and revise and edit as you need to, and then submit it here to this assignment in Canvas 5.5. That is option A, and that is where you take your own life and write about it from first and third person. The other option, option B, is where you, and again, if you want to use this, uh, this graphic organizer, if you want to use a graphic organizer, open it up, copy it, put it in another Google Doc, and complete the assignment and submit it back here. If you don't want to use uh, a, a template, then you just open up a Google Doc and label the parts that you need to. So the second option is where you pick an incident from the story that you're reading. 
Uh, pick a moment that stands out to you as emotionally powerful. Um, for example, when Christopher is uh, interacting with the police officers and eventually ends up going down to the police station. So I would state that it happens from page blank, blank, blank to this page. And here's like a very, like a one or two sentences about what's going on. I would rewrite the story in sentences, not bullet points, but in sentences um, from a third person point of view. So Christopher is retelling the story, but it's not, I did this. It's the boy or, or Christopher Boone did this. And then again, you would still write your three to four sentence uh, at the end, a reflection of it at the end, to talk about um, the overall effect it has. Is it more or less interesting than the way Mark Haddon's doing this? Why or why not? You go over the rubric and then you submit it. And I keep talking about this rubric. Here is the rubric in this assignment and you can also see it down here in Canvas. So this is set up the same way the rubric was set up for the um, call to action end of unit assignments. There are five criteria, five skills we're looking for. And they're listed here, um, A, B, C, D, E. If you meet all five, you'll get a score somewhere in the 17 points, which are somewhere in the B range. And those skills are reaches at least one page by either completing a graphic organizer or typing size 12 font double spacing on a Google Doc. So you get to choose if you want to use the template or if you want to put it on a Google Doc. And it reaches about a page. B is including both narratives, the one in first person and the one in third person and the reflection afterwards. Um, this one for part B, if you're doing the second option where you're doing Christopher's uh, a part of the story, you have to make sure that you um, bullet point out, here's the pages it's on and bullet point out the, the events of the story. And then the next part here is that you're using the correct pronouns for which assignment. So the first time you do either of the assignment, either of these assignments, it should be in first person pronoun. So if it's your story, I, me, my. If you're doing Christopher's story, option B, you still go using first person pronouns. And then the second time through, in both cases, you'd be using third person pronouns. And they're listed there. Um, it will include appropriate details in the story. Now, if you are Christopher, there's certain things that you can't know depending on which perspective you're in. So those details have to reflect which perspective you're in. You're going to have different details that you notice or can relate. If you're first person, you can definitely tell how you're feeling and what you're thinking. If you're in third person, you can't say what they're thinking, but you can say from the look on their face, they look like they're in deep concentration. So the details have to reflect the point, the point of view that you're choosing. Also, we want this, the narrative in order. So if you're going to use a narrative chronological order, like first this, then next, da, 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 then, you know, transitions are very helpful. If you're going to tell it in a narrative order, like Christopher found himself in the backseat of a police car, and then you switch back to how he got to the police car, you're definitely going to have to make sure that you use transitions. So make sure whichever order you pick makes sense and is clearly laid out. Of these five criteria, if you meet all five, again, the grade will be something in the B range, B, this is a B, B plus or B minus, so pretty close to there. If you meet three of these five criteria, your grade will be somewhere in the C range, C plus C, C minus. If you meet two of those skills, it'll be somewhere in the D range, D plus, D, D minus. Now you're like, wait a minute, Brannick, I want to do something more than that. Then you go through and in your narrative, make sure that you include um, imagery or sensory details and you label it. You have to make sure you label it. You can highlight it a different color and put a key on it. Uh, you can use uh, Google Comments, whatever works, um, but label it. And, it's not or, it's an and, include at least one passage where you utilize an illusion, a metaphor, or a simile, and label it. So you have to make sure, um, this is where you're upping your narrative writing. So these two things can only be done in the second paragraph of this assignment, no matter which option you pick, this would be the second paragraph where you kind of up the ante a bit and get it more descriptive. So please um, take advantage of this. It could raise your grade from a B to something in the A, but you have to make sure that you get these skills done first before you get this. If you only complete four of these skills, four out of the five, you don't qualify for this. You have to make sure you get all five skills met and then 
you can go and earn these points. If you only do you know two of these skills, but you do this, you don't get this and this. You have to make sure you get all of these skills done and then move on to beyond skills demonstrated. So I hope this clarifies uh, the assignment. Um, please make sure you complete the assignment. You look over the rubric again to make sure you've got everything included so you get the score that you're looking for. And that if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me or text me. Um, my contact information is in Canvas at the top where uh, the, the virtual learning contact information is or at the bottom of my email. I hope you are all doing very well. I miss you guys. I miss seeing your faces. I miss hearing about your lives. I miss some of the jokes you guys make and all the goofiness that goes on. So um, I am missing you. I look forward to these stories because uh, I think I'm going to learn a little bit more about your interesting lives and personalities through this writing assignment. So I hope all is well and let me know if something is causing you some, causing you some grief. Thank you.